Hey reviewers and welcome back to the channel and if you're new here my name is Jonathan and welcome to reviews. The Peugeot E2008 is an all new all electric compact SUV. From its modern LED lighting to its bold and unique styling it's a vehicle that really grabs your attention from the outset. The E2008 sports Peugeot's new tri-claw headlight design with matching fangs. It's certainly distinctive and personally I think it looks very sharp. Although it's a compact SUV, you still get a huge amount of space in the boot and even more so when you fold the seats down. And thanks to the load leveller, getting bigger items in is easier than ever. The load leveller can be stored underneath, expanding the boot space even further, and underneath that you've got a dedicated storage area for your charging cables. This system makes great use of the space available, and it definitely gets a thumbs up from me. Boasting some of the very best electronics and safety features on the market, and paired with one of the very best all-electric power plants, it certainly deserves a look and drive if you're in the market. You can get up to 80% charge in just 30 minutes using a rapid charger and the potential range of this car is up to 217 miles. The power plant produces 136 horsepower and up to 300 newton meters of torque in the sport mode. The model that we have to review today is the GT trim, meaning it gets pretty much all of the features and gadgets you could wish for and some of the very best styling and features. That being said, let's take a closer look at the interior. Okay then guys, let's take a look at the interior of the car then. So today we're in the GT version of the E2008, but the model range starts with the Active Premium. You've then got the Allure, Allure Premium, GT and GT Premium. Personally, I think the sweet spot is probably the GT. Um, if I was buying one, I'd get the GT Premium just for the panoramic roof as well. But you do get a mind boggling amount of equipment as standard on this car and I promise you there is so so much throughout I'll do some screenshots and pop-ups to show you but just to name a few then base level car traction control ABS five-star end cap safety airbags front rear driver curtain airbags you've got pedestrian safety built in you've got Apple and Android screen mirroring so you can obviously mirror your phone to there. You've got a phone charging station down here, automatic lighting, you get LED running lights on there as well. You can go for full LED as well and other packs, but honestly, it's absolutely mind boggling. You've got loads on there. You, you even get lane assist on there as standard as well. So again, fantastic. It's a really impressive lineup actually, and to have so much equipment as standard, yeah, it's genuinely impressive. Now, just to cover off the basics first, let's just go through controls. So controls for driver down here, nicely laid out. You've got your mirrors there, and obviously front of the windows, and you can lock out the rear windows as well. Down here, you've got your lane assist on as well, and turn off the interior alarm. Of course, steering wheel. Now, this one being the GT, we've got a funky, you know, leather type finish on there, and a little bit of stitching on it. It's very, very nice. I'll go through that in more detail. Up here again, because this one is the GT, we've got Peugeot's iCockpit, which is basically like a very snazzy 3D type screen. I don't know how well you're going to see this on the camera. Chances are probably not very well because of the 3D effect, but effectively what it does, the, the information that you want to see first is slightly further forward and uh, it really does work actually. So um, yeah, it's very, very cool. I'm actually really impressed with that. Um, if you go for anything other than a GT version, you get a three and a half inch screen at the front here, but again, very, very good. Over here, because this is a GT again, this is the 10 inch touchscreen here as well. Now you can also just go for um, a standard model, which comes with a seven inch screen, but they're very, very similar. So yeah, entirely up to you. The higher you go though, you do get some other options. Like not only do you get type C here for USB, standard USB, and if you go for the higher models, such as the GT, GT Premium, you get a proper charging station there. So charging tray, put your phone in there and you've got a ton of room there. In fact, that is a S20 Plus in a case, but the point is it's in its case as well, right? So ta -da. now, unfortunately, and it's probably just my case, but my case is quite bulky there. It wouldn't charge through the case, but if you took it out, it worked absolutely fine. But yeah, you've got plenty of room in there. And the reason I point that out is because not all manufacturers are giving people enough room to charge the phones of today. Some of them are massive, especially when you've got a case as well. But I did take it out of the case and it was absolutely spot on. So yeah, really like that station there. Really, really nice. You've kind of got a bit of a piano 
black type finish on this model here. You've got semi-automatic parking brakes, driver mode selection. Um, up here again, like the piano type theme, you've got the piano keys. These are pretty cool. And the, these are, you know, touch sensitive up here as well. So if we click on that one for car, as you can see here, we can go through and go into headlights. I don't know, I want to go back to audio there so I can look at that. I want to look at the frequency preset. If I want to look at my phone, push that one. You can connect a phone to it, etc., etc. But these ones are proper buttons. These ones are touch, okay? Um, heated seats just up here as well. You've got a little LED light next to it so you can see what level of heat you've got. And then you've got standard volume control here as well and power. So a little bit of storage down here. You've got a bit more storage in there. In here, you've got more storage it's quite big actually that you've got a fair bit of room in there and plenty in the door pockets here the door cards to fit big water bottles the space in the back was actually really generous now i sat in that very chair right there and i did have to move the headrest up but when i did that i actually had plenty of space plenty of headroom um, if you've got more than two of me sized people in the back um, well it's gonna be just four people in the car just for reference I am, you know, a big chap. I come in triple XL type size. I'm six foot four as well. So for me as a driver, it was great. And just to show you, you know, my headroom, got the seat where I want it to be. I think this is great. It's very comfortable actually. Um, I've got plenty of leg room and I'll do some cuts so you can see what it's like for the person behind me with the chair in this position. And you'd be surprised actually, you've still got plenty of room in the back. So that was kind of a general view then of it. In terms of some of the features then, these are very cool. So you've got a multifunction wheel here and you can just by using this, change some of the settings on here. So you can look at the driving and it's gonna bring up the dash for you there. Right now, using this drive mode here, if I push up or down, if I push the button, there you go. So you've got sport, normal and eco. Now I used it in the sport mode for the most part because I think I just like the responsiveness. It's surprisingly quick now. It is automatic, but it's one speed, okay? So there's no kind of real mechanical gearbox, so to speak of. You just put it into drive and away you go. And speaking of this here, you know, it's a lovely system to use actually. So you kind of just push the button on the side there. There's your parking brake, but you've got reverse, neutral and drive. Very simple and straightforward. And of course, here is your handbrake. So you can just pull up on there. There it is, and it's activated. You can just drive away now and it'll work fine. We'll push down to deactivate. Uh, in terms of the kind of fit and finish then, I think it's really nice. I think Persia have actually come a really long way in terms of their design, not only from the outside, but on the inside as well, because they're slightly bigger now than they used to be. And the, yeah, the finish of them is really nice. Now, you can go for full leather seats. You can go Nappa leather, but you kind of get this leather finish there with cloth. And I'll be honest with you, in this country, because it gets a kind of bit stuffy anyway, I'd probably go for something like this anyway. The GT Premium, you do get Alcantara. So again, like I said, I would pick that one anyway. And I think that's very nice. But if you want leather, yeah, you can have leather as an option. But these seats also, especially for a bigger chap, and I'll do some cuts to it because it's probably easier, but they're really comfortable. Now, as I say, for a bigger chap, I'm tall and bigger built, really, really comfortable, lots of adjustment in there. And, you know, loads of leg room for me as well. I really just felt really comfortable one thing i might say i do have quite big feet and i occasionally kind of messed with the pedals there when i was braking but yeah for the most part really really good so i think for you know small medium-sized families this kind of car is going to be great you've got loads and loads of room in this cabin absolutely cavernous to be honest with you so yeah really really impressive now if you go for the gt premium as well like i mentioned you will get a panoramic roof but you know, it's up to you whether you want to use it really. I think in this country it would be nice and it would lighten up the interior here, but it is not an essential. So yeah, carrying on with this wheel then. So you've got voice activation on this model here. You've got your controls there. Over here, it's where you can select and scroll up and down. And you've got your phone connectivity here as well. This one is where you change your menu up in this system up here. So you can go into dials, energy. If I click on this and go back to there, there's your energy readout. It's quite a cool system. I really do like that. The eye cockpit works really, really well. The navigation I was pretty impressed with as well because that's quite a nice system. And I know you guys probably can't see it like I can, but that 3D effect is actually pretty cool. They've executed it really well. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect when I was doing my reading about it. I thought, okay, here we go. But yeah, I haven't seen anything that good 
in that way of that type in any other car as yet this year so um yeah no fair play to them hats off to persia that's really nice and again this display up here then just to cover it quickly left hand side you've got your it's not fuel is it it's going to be range on this one but you know 175 from here and we left with a full charge i've done some driving already for about half an hour 40 minutes um, i'll come back to that in a second in the middle is customizable so you can have your speed on there and of course you can have your nav no problem um, speedometer and this will kind of vary and change depending on what screen you're using um, and on the right hand side there you've got your power modes okay so uh, full power eco and charge of course you get regeneration through the braking on here and this is fully electric only so not a hybrid um, so it's not complicated speaking of which the engine and the version in the uk is basically a 50 kilowatt battery and it's 136 horsepower in terms of torque it's 300 newton meters and i can assure you especially when you put it into that sport mode it is very quick now top speed uh, not we're going to be going for that today but top speed is 93 miles an hour um so more than you know enough to lose your license but i can assure you getting to 60 which is depending on where you read eight and a half to nine seconds it feels very quick especially the pulling away from standing to say 30 40 if you're in sport mode it's rapid and you've got no kind of turbo you know build up or wind up to kind of get you going it just goes straight away you dump your foot down this thing picks up and it goes and it's very very smooth and really nice but i won't spoil it because obviously we're going to do the drive in a minute but yeah overall fit and finish and interior really really impressive as i say i will have done some screenshots okay with the specs of the cars as i was talking so what you can do is just pause the video and have a look at it because every model as you go up will get everything that the previous version had plus the extras so that makes life really easy so start with the active premium okay um, but also look at what you get a standard to begin with and then you, as you go up you can say okay so those are the bits that i want and that way you're going to find the model which is right for you just a couple of other bits to mention in guys so in terms of lighting on the interior this one has the ambient lighting pack and i've already shown you the outside and because this one is the gt premium you've got full led lighting with smart beam assist as well the tri -claw design on the front there with its teeth which is very cool and yeah parking sensors front and rear so super well equipped this car okay so in terms of some of the tech as well i mentioned that this one's got lane assist as well but you've also got adaptive cruise control on this car automatic lights wipers you name it uh, android auto apple carplay screen mirroring as well um, you've got the 180 degree reverse cam as well so if i just show you that pop it into reverse there we go that should have popped up nicely there so yeah look we've got the we've got the view here there's the standard view in fact it was an auto yeah, look. there you go there's the 180 rear view so again you've got great visibility and to be fair i was going to show you that so if i just drop back a little bit as we turn it takes a bit of getting used to but um yeah it works really well in fact let's just go back to the standard view Ooh, there we go so yeah i like that so you kind of get that cockpit look as well and you also get the bars there to help you when you're making your maneuver so that system works really really well in terms of safety as well i mentioned you've got the parking sensors but you've got blind spot monitoring and active safety systems running on this car at all times so if they need to intervene and you need a bit of a, a warning for something they're going to pop up and of course help you and those kind of systems are there to you know assist you when needed because it only takes a blink of an eye for something to happen and sometimes these systems will kick in before you realize so it's great to have on this vehicle in terms of the navigation system then you do get speed camera alerts on there and real-time traffic and i do think you get a three-year subscription but check at your time of purchase just to make sure that everything is still as i said but at the moment those offers are available okay then so in terms of interior comfort and gadgetry yeah super impressive it's very comfortable and we're going to go for a proper drive in a minute but you've got a whole host of technology working for you both in terms of enjoyment comfort but also safety so yeah really really impressive and um, i hope you enjoyed this bit as we go any questions just let me know in the comment section i'll answer them for you but let's move on to the driving section all right then guys so we've done a walk around of the outside we've had a look at the interior features and functions let's take it for a drive
So to get started, you are going to put your foot on the brake. And obviously on this one, we've got the keyless activation, keyless drive. You've got a start button just at the front here. In fact, you press and hold. And that's it. That's it. She's alive. Okay. So then all you do is using your intense gear lever, press the button, push it into drive. We've got the parking brake on at the moment. That's going to deactivate. So literally just drive away and away we go. So the plan guys, what we're going to do is a mixture of town, country and dual carriage road driving as well just to cover a few different types and to show you what she's all about. Now, I wanna see what driving mode we're in because I want to be in normal to start with. And all I'm gonna do is just drive down here to this roundabout and off we go. I do like the sound of the indicators by the way. It's tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's quite, it's quite a methodical tune. Very, very nice. So as you can see, right, Whack it and drive and off you go. In terms of pulling away, it's just effortless. It really is. Um, it's not eerily quiet because, you know, you still get a tiny bit of, you know, tire noise, but you need to have something like that to at least know you're going. But there's not really any kind of wind noise or anything. I mean, you know, it's highly soundproofed and, and a lot of work went into the interior and exterior of this car. So very very quiet but you do get a bit of an electric hum especially under acceleration but in a good way um, you kind of know you're accelerating which is pretty cool there you go you can hear those kilowatts winding up <laughs> and she's so smooth it's ridiculous so we're doing 40 now this is a 50 here um, yeah i mean very very smooth you do get a tiny bit of like, you know, battery wine, but as I say, you need to have something. So at least you know you're going somewhere. Otherwise you would hear literally nothing. But the cabin is very quiet. I mean, even the wind and tire noise is, is hardly any. In fact, you probably heard it more at lower speeds than you do at kind of 40, 50 miles an hour. Madness. And to think this is 18 inch wheels as well, right? So, you know, you've got quite chunky tires on there. Yeah, no. Very, very nice. The driving position then, just while we're kind of going through this 50 zone, I'm a big guy, I've got the seat where I want it to be. It's a nice height, it's nice uh, in terms of comfort as well. Visibility of the road is very, very good. Uh, the comfort is fantastic. I've got plenty of room for my shoulders as well. Loads of leg room and uh, I did some cuts so you can see how much room is in the back as well. But yeah, no, it's a really, really nice place to be. My only slight critique, um, and you may have already heard this in other videos, I think the layout's brilliant. I think the technology is absolutely fantastic. If this screen was maybe a couple of inches higher up, it would have been absolutely perfect. Um, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. You know, you can still see what's going on. So yeah, happy days. Um, the steering wheel's a nice feel. It's quite sporty, this one. Um, it's not a massive diameter. It's quite a small wheel. Um, but yeah, it's easy to grip onto, not too wide. You've got that kind of sporty finish there. It does remind me of the old GTI type wheel. So yeah, very, very cool there. In terms of visibility then, just from a driving perspective, fantastic, you know, easy to see the mirrors. They're quite big, but they're nicely styled. The rear view mirror is quite wide and you've got loads of visibility out of that rear window. Absolutely loads. So no troubles there whatsoever. Um, again, looking over at the far side, yeah, no problem. Really, really good. So we are in a 30, so just to say that the 30 speed limit's come up, we're doing like 23 at the moment, but again, it's kind of tracking where we are. And I think that's a really useful tool to have, especially when you're driving in areas that you've not been before, because yeah, lets you know where you stand in terms of speed. It's a useful tool to have. So, you know, putting your foot down in normal mode, there's, I wouldn't call it a delay, but it's a smoother delivery of the power. If you put it in eco, it's designed to boost the range. Now, the range of this car, and it depends on where you read and what you view. Uh, Persia would say it would do around 217. Um, I'm going to say on a full charge, you're probably going to get 190, 200, depending on the kind of speeds you're using and whether you've got aircon on full. So, yeah, I would think probably 190, 200 out of a full charge. 
I've been driving this for half an hour, 40 minutes already probably, and the range is on 180, just to give you a bit of perspective there. So a bumpy section here over the crossing, which, <laughs> which this car just moved out entirely, so I wasn't expecting that one. It is McPherson suspension set up front and rear on this car as well, so it's very good, um, independent link, very, very smooth. Um, we'll do a bit of cornering, although we're not gonna be going, going crazy or anything, but um, you know, I'll let you know what that's like. Do you know what, I really, really like the cabins. I really like what they have done. Persia have styled it beautifully. It's very modern. Um, yeah, it's just a great look and feel to everything, really. The eye cockpit especially, I think, is fantastic. But it's just a really nice layout. I mean, they haven't kind of been shy about what they wanted to do. They're like, bam, we're gonna put in some technology. We're gonna make a dash, which is interesting. We're gonna make a display, which is not just interesting, but, but functional and, and actually really good. So yeah. Hats off to Peugeot, they've done a great job here. What I'm gonna do before we head off in a minute, using the driver selection, which was just down here, I'm gonna put it into the sport mode. There we go. Just because I like that a wee bit more. And the difference, just to tell you, is just about responsiveness of the, should we say throttle? I guess it is, right, the, the pedal. So um, it's just responsiveness. So just a slight tap and it will just go a bit easier. And I don't think you'd have to dump your foot down and, you know, waste your charge. I just think for me, it makes the drivability a bit easier. So just going through these country roads here, this is now a 60 mile an hour limit. We're not gonna be going crazy, but there's some twisties here. So at least we can do some cornering. Um, put your foot down, there's 40, 50, you know, and that was probably half acceleration up to 55 with ease. And I do mean with ease. So yeah, in terms of handling then, it does exactly what it says on the tin. You know, it handles just fine. It's comfortable. Uh, suspension's a wee bit soft, but then again, you're not buying a sports car at the end of the day. Uh, you're buying probably a practical family, economical SUV and tick in the box for all of those things. It's very, very nice place to be. Very comfortable, responsive, and handles great, perfect. So it's popped up with caution on the eye cockpit because of what looks like a hairpin corner. And it's quite right because <laughs> up ahead, although I wouldn't necessarily call it a hairpin corner, it is quite sharp. So if you look just here, it's a bit of a blind corner. There you go. Good system to have. Didn't know it was going to do that, so yeah. Bonus for the video. <laughs> it's kind of weird the way it picks up, actually. When you do put your foot down, there is almost kind of a rush, but it's quite linear in its delivery, um, but in a good way, in an exciting way. It literally just says, okay, power, go, like this. It's just, it's just, yeah. It's just an impressive pickup, I have to say. It, it's kind of changed my perception of what I thought an electric vehicle would be. I thought it would be quite numb and heavy and you know not particularly responsive. This is the complete opposite of that. And I haven't reviewed many of them, being completely honest with you. This is the first full electric that I have driven. But yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, we just get a tiny gap from the cars in front. We're only going like, a smidge over 30 now. But um, we're in the sport mode. If I put my foot down, look at that pickup. That's 50. From pretty much 30 to 50. In fact, I'm pretty sure it almost spiked the front wheels. <laughs> That's how much torque it's got, okay? So 300 newton meters in a fairly light car. She absolutely rockets. So smooth, that gearbox. The auto box. What do we call it now? I mean, it's got one gear. The box is very, very smooth. I mean, the way it just, yeah. I guess it's because of its simplicity, right? So, so smooth. One thing we won't be able to do on this review is tell you what it's like at night. Although, you do have on this model um, full LED lighting all round. 
um, daytime running lights as well, and smart beam assistant, which I've shown you as well. So I would think, not only do they look smart, I think they're gonna be fantastic for night driving. And in terms of the safety features, they work in a night mode as well. So again, if you're driving at late night through areas that you don't know, you've got those safety features running in conjunction with you know, your own senses just to help out if needed. In a minute, we're gonna get a bit more national speed limit section, then dual carriageways, and then back to Yeomans. So we're going through Hurst Monsoon now. It's another 30 area, a bit of town driving. And yeah, it's just effortless through here. Very, very smooth. Not having to fuss with the gearing or anything like that, and even have you know gear changes now anymore. None of that. She's just very, very smooth, you know, almost like a bit of a magic carpet, just gliding along, you know, no gear changes, no faff, no fuss. Yeah, just smooth and quiet as well. <laughs> These indicators. Bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> Yeah, so I have to say then, you know, the slower speeds and country roads, she's a real pleasure to drive. It's just effortless, it really is, you know, very good handling, very smooth, power delivery is great. Hardly any noise, I mean, honestly, it's just impressive. Really, really impressive what they've done here. Not just from a tire and wind noise perspective, but the sound dampening that they've obviously clearly done on this car. That was a caddy that's went past us. Lovely Cadillac, I might say. But yeah, they put a lot of sound damping into this and it's really, really nice. It's a lovely place to be. So just carrying on then, I feel like for an electric vehicle, you know, yes, at the moment you do pay a bit of a premium to have one, but when you factor in the contributions that you can get for them, uh, promotions that come from the dealers, and then the absolutely staggering MPG figures that you get from them, they are definitely now worth considering. So yeah, another town section there, again, very, very smooth, super easy. And when you've got it in our sport mode, it's really great to drive. What I'm gonna do, just super momentarily, I'm gonna put us down into the eco mode. There we go. And just to see the difference. Right, so when you try that and you put it into eco mode, performance and acceleration are limited. And you can really feel that, that's very noticeable. It's very smooth still and it picks up nicely, but it's nowhere near as quick. So of course, it's basically like it's battery saver mode, right? Okay, so we're now on to dual carriageway. This is a 70 zone, we're currently doing 50, but I just want to mimic a bit of acceleration. Let's just say you're joining a motorway. Put my foot down, 60, 65, 66, 8, 9, 70, right? So she doesn't mess around. She picks up really, really easily. And it's good to know because I wasn't sure, given it's 93 mile an hour top speed, that it might taper off a bit too soon, but it's fine. So for all of your legal driving speed limits, this car will get there pretty quickly. And I really mean pretty quickly. There's a lot of petrol and diesel cars that I've seen that don't accelerate that fast past 50. So yeah, very smooth, confidence inspiring, and great, economical as well, right? Absolute bonus. You can genuinely drive this like a fairly sporty hatch. It's that responsive. There's loads of cars that I drive that are not as responsive as this. Uh, we've got a Qashqai, for example. Um, and I think that's a 1.5 diesel. But um, this is quicker than that. So yeah, hats off to Peugeot. They've engineered something pretty special here. It's a very nice car to drive. Right, so here we are at a steady 70 then. And again, very little wind noise. Better than most cars, I would say and um, you don't really hear anything from the electric motor anymore now um, if anything it's just a little bit of tire noise and wind but in a good way you know it's very very quiet in here so yeah across all legal speed limits in this country the car excels it's very smooth it gets to the speed limits with no drama at all it's lovely and quiet especially even at motorway speeds it's a very impressive package i have to say it really has opened my eyes Okay then guys, so we're approaching the Peugeot garage again now, so nearing the end of our ride. Um, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Alastair and the guys at Yeoman's Group, you guys are absolute legends, so thank you for allowing me to take the car out and do the review today. And reviewers, thank you guys for watching, thank you for all of your support, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, as always, let me know in the comment section and I'll get straight onto it for you. And as always, stay safe, have fun, 
and I'll see you on the next one.